There is a famous Christmas story. I imagine you've heard it. It's called The Gift of the Magi by O. Henry. It tells the story of a loving couple, both of whom want to give a perfect Christmas gift to their mate. The husband decides he want to get, wants to give his wife these beautiful tortoiseshell jeweled rim combs that will complement her long, beautiful hair. The wife, for her part, she decides to give her husband a platinum chain that he can use to fasten the heirloom gold watch that he inherited from his father. But there's a problem. Neither can afford such extravagant gifts. And so, of course, the wife decides to sell her hair in order to buy the chain, and the husband sells the watch in order to buy the combs. And so both are able to give the gifts they want to to give, but at the cost of not being able to use the gifts that they receive. It's a sweet little story about generous giving with, of course, a humorous twist at the end. But it's a reminder that the gifts that we give are a sign of love. But if the gifts we give are a sign of love, well, can they not also be signs of other things? Consider this. A young couple were spending their first Christmas together, and the husband wanted to find the perfect gift for his wife. Now, this young wife, she had an ambition. She wanted to go to school and become a doctor. She had the marks to do it and had even earned some scholarships that would make it, if not financially easy, at least possible. But you see, the young husband, he wasn't so sure. He was worried that if she pursued such a demanding degree that she wouldn't be able to take care of him. He was worried that she wouldn't be the wife of his dreams anymore. And so he had been subtly trying to steer her towards a career that would demand less of her time and energy. And so he went shopping for a gift. And after looking all day long, he finally narrowed it down to two choices. Two possibilities. One was a lovely silk dress. He knew it was just the thing that would flatter her figure and appearance. Of course, he never really wore that kind of outfit, but, well, he figured it was just because she didn't want to spend the money. It was a designer dress. It was rather expensive. That was option one. Option two was one he wasn't particularly fond of, but But you see, it heard her mention that it was something that she wanted. It was just a a used stethoscope. He found it in a second-hand shop. Wouldn't really cost him very much, though he could tell it had been well made. But the gift seemed cheap to him. So, what do you think? Two gifts. One expensive, and and all about making her fit his idea of what she was supposed to be, and the other, well, kind of cheap. But it would show not only that he had listened to her, but that he was willing to support her goals, what she wanted. And you probably have an idea which gift he ought to give her, but I kind of wanted to underline the choice for another reason. Because, you see... Each gift would be a sign, wouldn't it? And whichever sign, whichever gift it was, it would be a sign of the health of their relationship and maybe where it was going. And yeah, the expensive gift might be the bad option, the bad sign. Well, the cheaper one was a good sign of hope for the future. But the gift would be a sign. And the angels said to the shepherds, This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. So you see, the gift is a sign. And it's sign not just of God sending his son to save us. It's also about the form that that gift takes. And and I know many people have told stories and and given sermons about the Christmas story down through the years. 
And so they've offered various explanations for why it is that Mary and Joseph had to travel to Bethlehem. Why it was, was when they got there, it was time for the child to be born and, and there was no room for the family. And so they had to lay the boy in a manger and wrap him in bands of cloth. The author of the gospel doesn't really an offer, offer an explanation for any of that. He just says, well, that's just what happened. Doesn't quite say why. Oh, no, wait, that's not quite right. He does offer an explanation. One explanation. He says that it happened precisely in that way because it was a sign and it was a sign of what? A sign that the Savior was being born for a bunch of crude shepherds. That sign was that the gift given was given with an understanding of people who struggle to find shelter or food to put on the table. It's a sign of a gift given by God. A God who understands both the aspirations we carry in our hearts and the barriers that we struggle to overcome to get there. It's a sign. It's a sign of the true nature of the gift. And why it is given. And what it means. The gift of the Messiah comes in a particular form. Because it's a sign. Pay attention to the signs. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you on this Christmas Eve. Amen.